Hi, good afternoon. Yeah. Yeah. Hi, good afternoon. Um, I'm Zenobia from Precision Eyewear Testing and Inspection Service Company. And today, and I would like to share a topic with you guys. And it's called Cost Cutting Done Right. The building block of an eyewear supply chain designed for China. Um, I would like to see how many of you have any supply chain or connections in China. Can you raise up your hand? All right, okay. So cost cutting, thank you. Cost cutting done right. Everybody likes to do cost cutting. But how can we do it right? And why today I choose the topic, which is the building block of an eyewear supply chain design for China. Why China? Let's see first. Okay, why China? Why not like some other countries? With raising labor costs, trade wars, etc., why is China still a good option for eyewear industry? From statistic, as you can see, in 2070, China was EU's European Union's largest partners for imports and second largest for EU exports. So I think from the data, you can see how important China as the partners with EU countries, like Italy, France, Spain. And China has an advantage that is low cost, skilled labor. Some may say, hey, Zenobia, how about Vietnam or Bangladesh? They are even lower the cost, eh? The key word here is the skilled labor. In China, we have many eyewear, you know, um, factories. They have been doing their eye, eyeglasses for many years, 20, 30, even 40 years. But like Vietnam or even Bangladesh, they just start this few years. So if you would like to have quality eyewear, China is still an option for you. Okay, and also China is a strategically located because that is a part of, it's the largest portions in Asia, okay, location-wise. So you can export to different locations. And also it's low, uh, in China they offer low war material, relatively, okay. Steel, liquid silver, even plastic, still relatively low compared with other countries. And here is access to cutting edge technologies. Okay, before in 20 years ago, maybe China has uh, technology, maybe everything is manual. But I think if some of you have been in China and visit some China factories, okay, you can see they really have a very nice uh, CNC or even um, um, machine or even robotic machines, AI machines to do some eyewear process, okay? And also in China, they have very mature infrastructure compared with other you know, country, developing countries. So that's why today I will choose the topic, which is cost cutting, mainly for the supply chain in China. If you have supply chains in other countries, you can take, the ref take it as a reference, but I mainly is focused on the in, in China. All right, there are seven approach for cost reductions. Okay, if you would like to have cost cutting in your whole supply chain, and uh, you can take this as your reference. 
Here, the first one is product design. You may think, oh, OK, I would like so fancy design, really nice frame, whatever. But if you would like to have cost cutting, you can consider um, the product design. You may have a simple design, but with very you know, um, different cutting. But you may not put so many rhinestone or use leather, whatever, on the frame. So you may consider, even though it's, you, you can use nice material, but um, not sophisticated design, because it requires higher process or more step to make it. And it is also a cost. But if you think, oh, OK, I need to have a special design. I cannot cost cutting and design. So another approach would be the product line rationalization. OK, that is another thing you need to consider. How can you produce something? Or maybe you can talk to your vendors. OK, and you, they would produce more best-selling frames instead of they just, OK, I have all 10 SKU, 100 SKU, you just help me to produce all. But you can review and see what kind of things that is best selling. Then you produce that. And then the third approach can be the lean product or manufacturing. So we say, OK, maybe I just buy frame from the factory, so it's none of my business. OK, so then when you select your vendors, select your partner in China, you may consider this is one part that, because you, you need to negotiate with the vendors or factories in China. If they have lean production and manufacturing, then it can help you to do the cost cutting. If you would like like uh, 6 euro, you normally buy 6 euro. But now you will need them to offer you 5.5 five, uh, 5 euros. How can they do it if they do the factory, have uh, like lean manufacturing? So they can offer you less, 50 cents euro less. So you need to discuss with them and find the right parlor. And the full approach would be the pool chain Supply chain management, pool supply chain management. OK. There are two approach uh, for the supply chain management. One is push, another is pull. In order to have cost cutting, and I would suggest you to consider the pool supply chain ma uh, management. What is that? Anybody know pool supply chain management? Is you produce what is on demand. It's not. You, 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 you predict and then, oh, OK, I think it's good selling. I produce, I ask the factory to produce more. But it's more or less it's on demand, on demand. If customer like this model as good selling, and then you just produce, ask the factory to produce what is right for the customer, OK? Now we are talking about the uh, cost reduction. Some people will say, oh, but I would like to do the forecast, and then I can have inventory. And if the customer would like the goods, and then I can just send it out. Yes, that is the push, supply chain management. But for cost cutting, you need to have low inventory, low inventory. In order to do that, you need to make sure that what you produce is what on demand. Then it's benefits to have to prevent any wastage. Otherwise, you have a lot of frame cannot sell out in your warehouse. That is the inventory that you don't want. Okay. And then the fifth approach would be the call, uh, quality focus. Okay. In China, you may think quality. Oh, China's eyeglasses quality may not be good, but nowadays may. After so many years, OK, and, and actually we are doing inspections in China, many like Wenzhou or Shenzhen. We see the quality levels is increasing in China, OK. But if you, OK, how can the cost cutting related to uh, quality focus? If the supplier and yourself focus on quality, so they don't need to Quality is not by inspections. It's really by the process. So if the every one, you and supplier, focus on the quality, they would have the process checking. 
not wait until the last minute pre-shipment and then find out, oh, okay, that is not what you want. Then they need to rework. Rework is the cost for you and for the factories. You cannot ship right as per your launching schedule. So it's also a loss. Another is total cost management. That is uh, something that you need to have. Uh, there's a seven step, but here I cannot detail to say that. That is a system to analyze the how you can benefit from one project or even a, 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 a product. It, how can you really manage the cost, each single cost? So if you don't have the total cost management, you may consider that would help you to do the cost cutting. And then the seven, the, the last approach that I would suggest is the material cost focus. Okay. So in China, there's a many suppliers. If you go to Pavilion 5 and 7, you will see a lot of suppliers, even here for the lens. But if you start from the material, then you, need, you, you can get the right material for your design. Instead of, okay, you just get from the um, factory, the manufacturers. Okay, you just purchase the materials for, for, for the frame for me. I suggest no. If you would like to do the cost cutting, you really go to the acetate factory or even the hinge factory, you talk to them. You talk to them, and then you can get the quality product, and the cost may be much better than you just direct buy from the manufacturers. So here are the seven approach I would suggest to have cost reduction. Before you do it, I would suggest you can do the cost cutting assessment by yourself, okay? And that is the practical points to consider how you can reveal your business, okay? Like the first one, raw material cost. Do you do it just through the uh, manufacturers or are you already doing something essential procurement and bulk purchase? And you are the one to talk to the raw material suppliers, lenses, um, acetate, hinges, suppliers. Second is the operational cost you can consider, like is managing orders and quality internally. For instance, how would you, you would, you, you may need to go to China, then your cost to fly all the way from here to China. And also there will be a time difference and language barriers and even the, the whole landscape, you have no idea, oh, okay, which part? Oh, Wenzhou, where is it? Shenzhen, oh, okay, uh, it's south in China. You need to figure it out. But if you have been in China, okay, this it would be okay. But always, you need to fly to China and face to face to talk to the people. So it is also a cost. And when you do the assessment, the third point I would like to uh, suggest to you is the manufacturing cost. Okay, is your partner factory, they are doing the lean manufacturing process. Do they have the QMS, quality management system? What is their rework way? That would help you to review is this the partner's right for you and can help you to have cost reduction. Okay, so if after you do the assessment, how much can you save? How much can you save? I have an example, a case study for you. And from this case study, and you can see, we can save up 67% on cost and time. How are we going to do it? As I say, we need to do assessment first. But in this case, I will give you some figures. That is real figures, okay. For instance, you have a factory cost is Euro 1.3, okay. Wow, very low cost, right? And the quantity is just 2,100 pieces and for three SKU, okay. And you may hire some people to do their inspections 
And the number of inspections in this case is three times, twice for inspections. But still not OK, fail, OK? And then the total cost for inspection, for instance, is 630 euro. So the cost per frame for the inspection already three, uh, 30 cents euro per frame. OK? If consider, if they choose the right, this customer choose the right factory to begin with, then just one time inspection, just one time inspection, OK? Here, the cost per frame for inspection will be just 10 cents euro. See? Save 67% on cost and time. That is really true figures. You can see, if you can choose the right factories, do it right at the first time. No need back and forth because you don't have confidence. Oh, how come it's failed? Then okay, you rework the factory we worked, and then you ask people to check for you, and still not okay. And then second time, third time, you may say, okay, Zenobia, we can ask the factory to absorb the cost. I still only can can um, just pay like the ten cents. Here, not only cost but time you lost time also. You're supposed to launch the collection in March, but it just dragged on, we work everything until April, so you missed the whole month sales. So who are going to pay for you, compensate to you? The factory? But only 1.3 euro. Can they compensate to you? Of course, no. Then the loss will be on yourself. This is very true. So I really would suggest you not only to do assessment, but when you start a project with, uh, in China, and you can consider have a feasibility study, OK, in this four area, like economic feasibility, the cost benefit. Is it good ways to go to China? or even like Cambodia, Vietnam, whatever. No, in China. But which part of China? Because now I focus on talking about China. Wenzhou, Shenzhen, or even now um, Xiamen, or even um, Chongqing, or uh, Jiangxi, OK? There are different part area in China. So you need to consider. When you fly to there, or you need to transfer another flight to there, or need to take a bus or high-speed train, whatever, it also costs. How about the technical feasibility? Um, can the factory have ability to produce what you design? How about the operational feasibility? OK, how can you control the efficiency when you work with the uh, China factories? And also the fourth is the schedule feasibility. You just call them, email them, WhatsApp them. OK, when is your delivery? And the scheduling, they always be high or delay again and again. What are you going to do? Wait. Or just penalty, right? But still, you cannot receive your goods. So a lot of things that you need to do is to do the feasibility study about your product or even your project. OK, after that, and cost saving, there are three areas in that case study, OK? In that case study, if you find the correct factories produce quality products, find the right suppliers to produce quality products. You have no hassle, no delays. And how about safeguard qualities? From the incoming, that's why I'm, I, I suggest you to start from raw material suppliers that you need to control, not only on the cost, but also you, you have in mind their quality, how the quality is, OK? Because the, here is the key word, one time pass away, and no market returns, OK? Quality is to win the customer satisfaction. If you are in the retailer, OK? or you are the distribution, 
distributor, then you need to have quality product. Otherwise, the market will say, oh, okay, I don't like that product because the lens pop out, the hinges are easy to take off or whatever. Then it's everything is your brand reputation, okay? Product compliance. There are many RSL. That is the restricted substance list, like lead, cadmium, and especially in um, ice, uh, in EU, there will be a rich REACH, the rich compliance that is required. So, even though you have a quality product, but you still need to consider the regulation. Otherwise, your product may have recall. That's why you need to win your customer's trust, especially a lot of like big brands, international brands. They are not only sell frames in EU countries, but the extra EU countries. Okay. So you need to consider. Not just take cost. There's something, um, I'm not sure how many of you would consider. You you would review your logistic costs. Maybe your finance, your accountant. Because different, country, uh, different company, they would have different logistic costs. I just show you some example, okay? Some would have a high labor cost. Some would have a, they would spend, they, they, they really have a very good material. They would spend a lot of money on the material and overhead. They hire their own people to do many stuff like Okay, and how about logistics? As I say, if you always need to fly to China or, you know, a fly somewhere else or ask your supplier fly to your place, whatever, that is the logistic. Or you need to send the frames, you ask the factory to send some, like, uh, P shipment sample for your review, and then you comment and then send it back to them. It's also a logistic. Back and forth, even though you have... Uh, FedEx or UPS, it's also cost because you need to ask them to send you the frames for review and then any comment and then send it back. Or even send to the people in China for you to check on the frames. So it's high logistic cost in some way. And now about the GNA, the general and administrative cost. Okay, every company they will have GNA. Okay. And afterward then you have profit. But what is plus plus mean? So it means some other country, uh, some other company, they would have different costs. They would count as a logistical cost. I just put this as an example. Okay, example. So you need, to, I would suggest you to review your company logistic costs. If you would like to do the cost cutting, that is very important. You need to discuss with your boss your accountant, how you define the logistic costs in your company. Because that would be your KPI when you see if you can really reduce or lower the cost. Otherwise, you have no partner. Okay, um, how can you say you, you, you save costs? As, because you have no, no ground, no KPI to start with. So I really suggest if you don't have that kind of um, logistic cost or uh, assessment, you can start it now and see how you can help yourself. Okay, what is your choice? After you do the assessment and everything. And you can have like, for instance, if you focus on one part is the co uh, quality focus. If you have your own people visit and, and, and regularly go to the factory to check your product, of course, it's easy to communicate, complete understanding, because the people is from your side, okay? But it will be high cost and less visibility, okay, somehow. And then you need, the, the people need to learn some China cultures, okay? And other options you can consider is outsource to a third party to do it, okay? Because they are really total understand the China culture and they really understand the, the China manufacturers. And then they understand the China regulations on the products, okay? 
And of course, you don't need to bear some other costs that you, 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 you don't know. Later on, I will share how the cost would be, OK? And also, it's flexible and uh, one, time, uh, one, uh, one time service. Because it's flexible. You ask people to go or not, or this time, I don't want you to check anything. And then you, you, you they, they just don't go, because it's by order. They do it by order. All you need to do is remote communication and, manu uh, and management. And another one is some people, some brand, I see they start to do it in China, is they set up their China um, office, their own China office. Because they think it's easy to control. And it's global management. They, they have uh, different peoples to do it for them. But they need to consider high costs because, and also, they need to regularly upgrade the computer and everything for their office, local office in China. And also, they need to consider is there any uh, labor regulation they need to comply. And also, it takes time to set up their own office. You need to find somebody you trust. You may s send your, the best staff from your country to China. But the point is, do they like to stay in China? Can they adapt the culture? That is a different issue. Of course, they, you need to pay high <laughs> to him in order to send him to China to work for you, to set the office for you. OK, here is the cost comparison. OK, uh, that is, uh, um, you can take as a reference. If the first part, you send people to overseas to do it, OK, always fly back and forth. For instance, that is the salary annually. Is it high or not? For instance, that is the uh, sourcing manager, OK? And then, OK, run cheap ticket and accommodations and also insurance. And for instance, the PO quantity is 100,000 pieces and for three SKU. That means the 100,000 pieces cost you per frame, all this cost is close to $1 euro, 91 cents. How about you hire somebody, third party, to do it? They charge mandate, and it depends on the location if you ask them to fly to different regions in China. And also accommodation, OK, is, is much cheaper than your guide to stay in, in, in hotel. Because the Chinese people can stay in motel, but your staff may like to stay in hotel, like Shangri-La or even a four-star hotel. In insurance, you don't need to take care. In this case, for instance, it's two mandate, it's just like point less than one cent. It's 0 0.005 euros, OK? But if you would like to set up your own office to have more control, that is your option also, OK? I do this for your reference, too. In this case, for instance, you need that one QC and one order follow-up for, for your order project, OK? And that is, suppose it's German B, I just uh, converts to Euro for your easy comparison. And also depends on the location, if you like the, your staff to travel, and the housing allowance. And one thing you need to consider is the insurance. If you hire your own staff in China, there are five uh, insurance, injury, medical, unemployment, maturities, retirement insurance. You need to pay for the, for the um, staff in China. All that sum up. In this, in this case, um, 100,000 pieces will cost you 50 cents euro. Wow, it's much cheaper compared to just find some people over there. This is your choice. This is your option. I just uh, would like to share the cost comparisons for you guys so that you can really see how would you choose. That is the options in terms of the cost. If you would like to do a cost cutting, 
um, in your supply chain. That's one thing that you, you need to consider. Three things, like, okay, cost cutting in the eyewear supply chain. Audit, audit the factory. If the factory is the right factory, they have, just like what I told you before, the technical feasibility and do they have the lean manufacturing? If they don't, never mind. Do they have the quality management system? And how about the factory, the management, the factory management guy? Do they have the mindset and how they would do the quality product, okay? And also the um, inspection, that is something that you may consider. Like you hire a QC for your your own QC to do it, or you send some people to over there, or you just ask the factory to send frames to your warehouse you check on site. I mean, in your warehouse. And also the testing. If you sell to different countries, they have different regulations, just like RSL, which if you sell to US, then you need to consider Pop 65, FDA, and all the regulations. You need to make sure your products comply. So in order to have cost cutting, if you just squeeze, squeeze, squeeze your manufacturers with no pawn, they cannot do anything. They cannot do anything for you. First. Do they have the mentality to, to do the lean manufacturing? If no, if you squeeze them, they have nothing. <laughs> they have nothing to offer. If you squeeze them 10 cents, they may just see, okay, maybe I just steal 10 cents from the raw materials. What happened? Maybe fail in which, and maybe high lead or cadmium. If you want to them to, um, do it right at the first time, better to control in your hands, not by the manufacturers. The cost-cutting liability is all on your own hands. It's your choice to, 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 to spend more but get less. But if you would spend Less to get more, you need to do the assessment, the cost-cutting assessment for your company, for yourself, for your project. And then you can see which part you can really squeeze more, OK? Because nowadays in the, in the whole market, everybody is cost-sensitive, really cost-sensitive. If you go to different booths, the first thing the, all the buyer would ask, how much? How soon you can deliver? If you just look at the cost they offer, then and, and, and then disregard anything, eventually, is it you really can save the cost that you scouting all the uh, all the you know suppliers, or you really have a stable cost cutting? for your company. It's all up to you in your hands. That's why I would like to share this uh, concepts with you because a lot of buyers, distributor, of course, even myself would like to have cost cut in my, com uh, in my company, but need to be do it right, done it right, just like the topic I share with you, okay? Cost cutting done right, not brightly, just squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. OK, it's, it, you cannot get the right thing. OK, that's uh, the end of uh, my presentation today. So if you have any questions or any questions uh, for me, and then you can um, raise your hands or you can contact us. There is some ebook that uh, I would like to share if you, you are interested, like the Ultimate Eyewear QC Guide to Efficiently Reduce Defects. So you, you, you may consider, okay. But um, there is also a free download um, guide to find the uh, suppliers for eyewear startups. But if you already have 
uh, your partners. It's no harm you take as a reference, okay? Because right partner is very important uh, when you start your project, okay? So these are three downloads that, and uh, if you would have further information you would like to have, feel free to visit our booth. It's Pavilion 2 H45. Okay, any questions about the topic I shared today? Yes. I think I don't understand very well. Uh, about the labor costs, uh, the, the Chinese production is uh, famous because uh, the labor costs is uh, very low. Labor, labor, labor costs. The, the salary of the workers, okay, is uh, very, very slow in front of uh, the, the, the European, for example, uh, workers. Uh, 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 you suggest uh, to cut the labor costs? No, no, I don't, I don't suggest to cut. Uh, uh, can I know what is in euro the, the uh, average of labor costs, of the workers in the IWAR? Yeah, uh, for for here, huh? in the here, yeah. yeah okay. okay, thanks for your questions. Okay, I'm not asking you to squeeze um, the to cut the labor cost for the workers because in China, that's why I here. When you select the suppliers, okay, how they treat their workers? Do they pay fairly to the workers? You need to chat with the factories because different regions would be different like in Shenzhen area workers average because they need to have the insurance if they, they pay right is about like the minimum wages in Shenzhen area would be like a, a 3,000 yuanmenbi 3,000 but if Dongguan would be different in Wanzhou would be different too in Chongqing will be different. So if in far uh, is not south uh, part of China, in the north or even east will be like one uh, two thousand or two fifty thousand renminbi. Okay, the the minimum. But with the minimum wages, you cannot hire skilled labor. It's the minimum. Yes, the minimum. No average. Yeah, that is the minimum. So the, the factory need to pay for the workers. Otherwise, they, uh, the police will come. <laughs> yeah, they, so when you start from, uh, um, you, you need to audit or you find the right partner that you need to ask them how they pay. If this is your concern, you don't want to have the factory to pay less uh, for the workers. That is no good. But actually, some... China factory, they really pay fair because they do the brand. They have the social compliance nowadays. So that's why in China and some, uh, just like all the big brand, international brand like Nike, Adidas, they really have people to go to the factory to check, even to check the factory bank account if they really pay each single worker's right fairly if they work overtime. Okay. Any more questions? Yes. In order to like, uh, you do the, the audit and so on, right? Like the audit, the texting and the inspection, is it you who made like your company, right? Oh, yes. Okay, and how does it go, the, pro the process in order to make this audit, testing, and inspection? Is, for example, we want to audit more than one supplier? How, how your company works? Oh, th thanks for your questions. Actually, it depends if you, okay, it really depends on if you do it, uh, what you concern. The audit. There would be like what I say is social compliance. You would like to check if uh, we have auditor to go to the factories on your behalf 
to see if the factory to pay fairly to the workers, or maybe this is not your first concern. You may concern if the factory can produce the right product. Do they have the um, uh, right technician, uh, skillful labor, or even the machinery, the cutting edge? So our auditor experience to see if they have they are really doing everything manually or they have machinery. So maybe the capability of the factory is one thing that is your concern. And also, the, uh, as I say, do they have lean manufacturing is your concern. Because if later on, if you would like to have like a cost negotiation, that is something that they can maybe, they can offer to you. But if you just go to um, some, uh, the, the, the factory is really, Ordinaries, so maybe they cannot do it. So the audit can subject to what you would like to see, okay? Because in the soul, a lot of people will say, oh, okay, the sample is very nice, the factory, the photo is very nice. You don't even know if the factory really exists or they, they are really just a trading company. You don't even know. Picture cannot tell, right? So you would like to have somebody to go there and really take photos for you to take a look instead of you all the way fly there, spend the hotel and, 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 and flight tickets to take a look. And maybe you don't even know how you take a look. You understand me? Yeah, so that is the audit part. And the testing, of course, they will say, okay, I buy from A vendor, B vendor, C vendors. But you don't even know is A vendor, C vendor, D vendor is okay. Um, unless they buy from Masagali or even all the big gut hinge manufacturers, okay? Like the Sorticers, OBE. But you, you may not, cannot, you may afford the price from all these suppliers, okay? So, and they say, okay, I have a partner, it's from China, they can comply all your uh, regulation. Can you believe? You may not. Then ask them to send sample and then we can verify. It does not matter is is acetate or hinges, whatever. As long as they comply, it's okay. You're safe. And inspection, we can send people to do the like full inspection for you or even just draw sample and see. If it's out of uh, the AQL, then you may ask the factory to rework until everything you feel okay. Because from the inspection, we will take pictures and let you know how the product would be. Because we have people in China as your eyes. That is the point. Hope I can answer your questions though. Okay. Thanks for your coming and thanks all the questions. If you still have any questions, feel free to stay or go to um, the booth here, Pavilion H45. Thank you very much. Thanks. <laughs>